So, it's come to this. Garten of Ban Ban 7. I, as well as the internet, have had such an interesting history with this little franchise. The first couple of games were released back in early 2023 and became an instant laughing stock for <laughs> reasons I don't think I even have to explain. It's just a little squid game. Back then, also known as eight months ago, I threw my hat into the ring of talking about the four parts that were out at the time. If you want to know my thoughts of them in detail, I recommend checking out this video. But long story short, while I think the fourth one is okay, the whole series is mindlessly boring with a sprinkle of so bad it's good moments. Since then, Garden of Bandman 6 has come out. Yes, 6, not 5, trust me, I don't know. The 6 one, I didn't feel the need to talk about because it was more of the same garbage the franchise was known for, if not even worse this time. Honestly, this one made me give up on the series and assumed when the next one came out, everyone would realize the fad was dying out and we'd all collectively forget about Ban Ban. I know I did a video about Mascot Horror, with a section talking about the teaser for Chapter 7 in which I noted the series was showing improvements, however, I'll level with you viewers, I didn't care all too much. Again, it's this series we're talking about, it's not like you can expect much when you hear it's slightly improving. That was until I started hearing positive things when it released. I mean, come on, Daco played it, and he liked it! Squeaky butt. I knew at that moment, I had to try it myself. After trying it, am I glad I decided to give the series another chance? Ooh. Um. Um. Alright, let me set the stage for those unaware. The story up until now is about a mother going to the Ban Ban Kindergarten to pick up her son. She then gets tangled up with a bunch of mascot horror creatures when getting deep underground. The last part ended with the main villain of the story, Sir Dada Do, possessing the main characters to be evil. Garden of Ban Ban 7 picks up right where we left off, with us, the player, in an unrelated section. The first 10 minutes is a complete waste of time, as what you're dealing with is a monster that is completely irrelevant to everything else. This wouldn't be a problem if this was simply meant to be as a warm-up, except there's an unskippable 2 minute video explaining how to deal with said monster, who doesn't even need this much explanation. It just feels like padding to avoid people from refunding the game after beating it in under 2 hours. And guess what, it didn't work. After a weak start, Die. we meet a new character named Syringin, who is evil at first, but then is cool, and we work together with him. He sends us to a small city filled with alien residents to gather info and materials to track down Jumbo Josh, who is needed for a plan to stop Sir Dada Do. That's a basic summary of what's going down, and from the sounds of it, it sounds like another repetitive mess that the other games were plagued with. Until good stuff starts happening? Like, Syringian's introduction is pretty good. The scenery and lighting is really well done. Plus, him in general has a cool voice, I'll give him that, and does crack a good joke. I introduce to you, Remote 2.0, a name I totally didn't make on the spot. Also, the city he sends us to is actually fun to explore. I enjoyed the motel section where you need to help out a guest with a noisy neighbor, and when you checked on the noisy neighbor, I love it, it's hilarious. It does lead to a chase sequence with a possessed bitter giggle that at first had me like, wow, a chase sequence in Garden of Ban Ban? How innovating. However, this one is good. You'll be jumping many roofs, going through mazes, and eventually taking a leap of faith towards Sheriff Toadster, who saves you. This doesn't compare to what happens next. Spoilers, I guess, but possessed bitter giggle catches up and gets, quote, toasted by Sheriff Toadster, leading him gain unpossessed and then back to normal to where he dies. And dude, I won't lie, I was bawling my eyes out here. It was, it was almost so good. Another genuinely fun part was the theater area. First, there's all the fun easter eggs like the Lick of 78 and Zumbo Sauce. That I'm glad wasn't shoved in your face like I initially believed it was based on teasers. The actual theater area is also pretty neat too, as you'll be collecting studio lights to help an alien be able to watch his show. I also really like the section with Bambolina, which was a definite shock considering the fact it was very similar to her section within the second game. Except it's fun this time and you aren't waiting through long, unskippable sequences. It's almost like the developers have made... improvements! The best part of the game, however, was this weird dream sequence with Stinger Flynn. 
basically we're in a plane with all the characters and then Ban Ban goes crazy leading to us jumping out and it, 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 it's beautiful. I had a smile on my face as I was falling to my doom with these guys. There is no one on planet Earth I would want to be falling to my death with than the Garden of Ban Ban Cast. God. Every part from the story to gameplay came together to where I was shocked to see myself never bored. Trust me, after the last one, I'm happy I could feel anything but bored. Okay, okay, I've said a lot of nice things for Garden of Ban Ban. I'm not trying to give the impression this game's a masterpiece because, believe me, there are big flaws. The drone we've been using a ton recently got an upgrade with the Remote 2.0, allowing us to control the device for ourselves. And while I'm glad the drone is more useful than ever, it feels horrible to move around. There would be many times where my drone would just go through the floor and be stuck for a bit. Another thing I think is pretty bad is the designs for the aliens. At first, I thought these guys were going to be a source of horror before realizing they were a complete joke with their voices being cameos from YouTubers. Is it funny to hear a uh, yeah in one of these games? Obviously. Why wouldn't it be? Unfortunately, it feels like the game both wants these aliens to be scary and have silly cameos be their voice. And I just don't think it works together when combined. There's also an easter egg where pushing a button plays a song and a couple of the civilians start dancing. And while I admit it's pretty funny, I'm still left confused on why these designs are the way they are based on the context they're used. Maybe the creators were going for some type of subversion where you think the aliens are bad based on their appearance? Only to find out they aren't? However, I don't think they succeeded in executing that. Instead, I felt the immersion I had completely slip away when I talked to the first guy and heard, Hey, 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 Roland Rosbensky here! Obviously, that's not how it goes, but you get what I mean. It's a shame too, because there's a later part in the game where it uses an alternate alien design that's pretty well done across all angles, and the gameplay of using your drone to open the door while being on the run is a breath of fresh air compared to simply being chased down a hallway. It really makes me wish these designs were a lot more friendly, so when I met this thing, I'm now facing against something that I once saw as nice turn into scary. Holy shit, I think I just described mascot horror. One of the last things I want to talk about is the ending. I know everyone watching this video is already sitting, but like, just grab another chair and put that chair on that chair and, and then sit on it, because this ending is something else. Once we've helped Syringin, we're able to set up a trap for her. Sir Dada do I can't take it anymore. Can we please talk about his name? I get this franchise has characters like Jumbo Josh and Opila Bird, but Sir Dada do is a name that's on a completely different level. The craziest part is this character was introduced in the last chapter, so you'd think I would have known their name by now and would have gotten used to how dumb it is, except the sex one was boring that I didn't even register that until now. Is it my fault for not paying attention? Yeah, but Sir Dadadu, are you serious? Oh, if you think that's where it ends in terms of wild stuff this game pulls off, dear viewer, you'd be mistaken. When we finally capture Sir Dadadu, he's about to send his possessed army to kill us until Jumbo Josh shows up and starts fighting everyone as we're riding around in a Disneyland type roller coaster and it's just wow! I think this is cinema! After that amazing fight, Jumbo Josh grabs something I don't care enough to explain and lets his intrusive thoughts win, God. leading us to wake up in the hospital. The game ends with Syringin betraying us after we discover a secret character behind the wall that I guess we weren't supposed to see. That was Garten of Ban Ban 7. I hope after all the pros and cons I've talked about, you're able to see why I'm so mixed on describing this one. I certainly had fun while playing. Yet there's nothing I'd call great. That doesn't have to be a bad thing though, and heck, you might disagree with me. Personally, I find the franchise as a whole works best when it's doing the most out there shit ever instead of attempting horror and failing horribly. I know I praised the part earlier for having decent horror, but that's exactly what it was, decent, and that's probably the highest compliment I can give in that category. Again, when it's being batshit insane, it's some of the funniest and greatest moments I've ever witnessed while playing a game. Have I developed some form of Stockholm Syndrome? Have I gotten so used to how bad these games can get to the point where I'm willing to accept anything close to average? Maybe. Maybe. 
So I'll let you people do the talking in the comments of what you thought of this chapter. As for myself, I guess I would say I'm a fan of the series? Don't get it twisted, I'm only here for the absurd things they could pull off in the next one. I bet the number one Garden of Ban Ban fan that I know, the red dude, won't really care too much about why I'm a fan now. Isn't that right? Aren't you glad we can at least agree on this franchise being entertaining? Hmm, not really. You see this body pillow of Jumbo Josh? I'm over him. I'm over everything regarding that tasteless series. I've got a new body pillow, taped with a mirror on it because I'm my own hyperfixation now. Have you ever broke, broke the, the mirror while using it? Yes, yes I have. Any more questions, smartass? No, sir.